Hey guys, we're on the shores of the Potomac where two Coast Guard patrol boats, part of the Department of Homeland Security, are doing drills. They've been uh, chasing each other and uh, dredging the bottom of the Potomac back and forth, doing some sort of training exercise. Coast Guard and the DC police patrol this part of the river pretty regularly, much more so than since 9-11. It's also the DC Fire Department patrols out here. Some of you may remember the infamous airline disaster in which an Air Florida plane took off from National Airport and it crashed into that bridge right there. That's the 14th Street Bridge. And then it fell down there. You saw the photographs of the Park Police helicopter ferrying people over to that little bridge, which is right over there by the Pentagon. The Pentagon's the building just in the background over there. So that is where the Air Florida disaster took place. That's where the Coast Guard's patrolling, and that's Arlington Cemetery up over there. Oh, geez. So, for my Periscope watchers, I'm sorry. I have to temporarily disconnect. What's that helicopter over there? Huh. I have to temporarily disconnect the Periscope feed. I'm going to restart it in just a minute after I do my son's uh, COVID check for school, because he's got to go to school. That's a strange helicopter. So Periscope guys, I'm going to be right back. I'm sorry. That's like a private helicopter. For everybody else, you can just keep watching. So my son is in person today for sports. And as a result, he's got to uh, fill out his school app. Well, I have to fill out his school app to say, I think they have like 15 questions or something like that. Put the mask back up. Boy, this is a lot of questions. All right, done. Now I got to screenshot the thing to him. Okay. Whew, what a pain in the butt that was. We have to fill out that app every day when the kids are in person. I guess it's not that much of a pain on the butt because it does get them out of the house. <sighs> so we're going to restart our Periscope feed. We really haven't gotten a very good start today. It's been one of those days that everything can go wrong. There you can hear a jet going over from National. Okay, now we've got our Periscope stream going, we've got our YouTube recording going, and we've got our feet going. So everybody's happy on this sunny day. It's about 37, 38 degrees in Washington, D.C. We've got a lot of snow coming tomorrow, somewhere between two and six inches. And let's make our way down the street. Now I bet my son is going to call me because his YouTube time is expired. And he's going to be really mad that my limitation device has just cut off his YouTube.
<laughs> I have a Disney Circle device that controls all the time on the devices in the house. And he reached his limit for YouTube videos. He's under orders not to call me unless it's school related. I know, man, I got all these things coming in from my kids. Dad, do this app. Dad, renew my internet time. Dad, do this. Dad, do that. It's kind of mental. Man, it's cold. I need some sort of AI assistant. Or my wife could just take care of those requests. <laughs> but she's pretty busy today. I called her, I was like, what do you want to feed the kids for lunch? Oh, I was thinking of making this, and then I can thaw this out and make this. And then I'm like, you want me just to get them Nando's? She's like, yeah, just get them Nando's. I'm like, okay. Because I knew she didn't want to cook lunch. <laughs> Though I'm thinking of making that TikTok pasta everyone's talking about. There's some sort of TikTok pasta that's going around viral. So the Jefferson Memorial is under massive renovation right now to the tune of $8 million. I want to go in there, but I don't want to get in that water. Let's go this way. The memorial renovation is caused by bugs. <laughs> so they turn the lights on the memorial and that attracts like the little bugs. The little bugs are, they draw the spiders. The spiders come for the bugs. Then the hornets come for the spiders and the wasps come for the spiders. And all of this eating and circle of life crap that goes on creates this goo of biofilm that sort of has been eating away slowly but steadily on the memorial. So they just started an $8 million, $8.2 million renovation due to weather and bugs to remove it. Now the top of the thing, the top of that building, it was black for like the last three years. Basically bug juice on top of that building. Well, these things are so old that yeah, they are pretty much under renovation all the time. There's almost always something getting renovated. In 2000, they renovated the Washington Monument, only for like 15 years later, there to be an earthquake, and then they had to renovate the whole thing again. This, I think, has been renovated twice in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. The U.S. Capitol is being renovated always, the dome. It's expensive to keep old buildings. Hello, Belgium. I tell you what, I don't think I've ever taken the Periscope users inside the Jefferson Memorial. So we're going to go up into the Jefferson Memorial today. <sighs> Our plan today, we're going to walk past printing and engraving, Holocaust Museum. We're going to skip the monument. We're just going to go straight down the mall, make our way up to the U.S. Capitol. Hey, there's a little bit of snow left. Not much, but a little. Let's see if we can get inside. It's open. So the sign says. Do, 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 do. How many steps? quiet. <laughs> Respect, please. Everything's closed right now.
I'm all by myself. That all men are created equal. The Declaration of Independence. You can see like the green, the copper is like oxidizing. It's noisy in here today, but <laughs> I don't think I've ever been here all by myself. That was kind of cool. Have my own memorial. One more view? Okay. What does it say at the top? It says, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. I got dizzy reading that. <laughs> I was like spinning around looking up. <laughs> oh well. You want me to go up in the Washington Monument? Well, it's it's really hard right now, but one day maybe we'll get up there. Honestly, the view is not great. So this is actually a helicopter flight path. There's another helicopter coming. I think this is, is this the one we just saw or is this a Black Hawk? Helicopters come back and forth across D.C. several times an hour. Uh, the view from the Washington Monument is good, but it's kind of like, mm, it's kind of like it's not worth the wait if there's a wait. The Trump Tower in the Trump Hotel, the old post office pavilion, there's never a line to go up there. So this is a Black Hawk coming out of the Pentagon or out of the CIA and delivering some person back and forth. We'll wave to the next one. <laughs> there are so many. If you go over to the Pentagon in the morning, you can see, I mean, you literally see a half dozen of those things landing, bringing generals in from bases and Andrews Air Force Base and stuff. Ah, okay. Do, do, do. So this is the tidal basin. This is actually man-made, basically. The uh, water in the Potomac comes up, the tide rises, and it gets shunted into this area. And then when the tide is released, it goes back out that side. That's the Washington Channel. So this is designed to help stop Washington, D.C. from flooding. It's also a cool place to have paddle boats. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to walk along this. This is all the cherry blossoms, which should be in bloom in about a month or two. These were a gift from the Japanese government many, many years ago. Interestingly enough, the United States government donated some flowering dogwood trees to Japan uh, to say thank you for the cherry blossoms. But during World War II, Japanese nationalists cut down most of the dogwoods in sort of a protest against the U.S. Though a botanist thinks, thinks he has discovered a few of the remaining flowering dogwoods or whatever in Tokyo University. 
So there's a little grove of these trees that they believe are the only ones left over from the American gift to Japan, which was in the response to the Japanese gift to America. <laughs> Funky stuff. You can Google that. That's still being debated amongst the tree-loving populations of the world. So we're going to walk up over there. That's 15th Street. And then we're going to walk down to about 4th Street. That's about 11 blocks. Uh, walk down the National Mall. We can't get much closer to the Capitol because still the Fort Knox Berlin Wall is still up. And to be honest, they're getting a little bit touchy up there. A couple of YouTubers, myself included, have been detained by the police and interrogated. What were you guys doing? What are you filming? Yada, yada, yada. It's getting a little bit tense. So we'll go up there, but we won't make too much of a scene, I don't think. There are a lot of homeless people, uh, Mr. Phillips. In fact, I just uh, put it up on my YouTube channel. Homeless man died not more than three blocks from the Capitol yesterday. Froze to death, basically. Had a heart attack. There's a homeless camp about two to three blocks west of the, of the White House. And then there's a homeless camp I just saw this morning up by the U.S. Capitol. They have uh, tents. Well, a lot of the homeless suffer from problems that are beyond financial. Uh, addiction problems, mental illness problems other things and it makes for a un unwise situation I don't know what it's difficult now tonight because it's going to be so cold the charities will be driving buses around to try to gather them and put them into shelters but there's always some that don't want to go into the shelters and uh it's difficult. The shelters have problems too. There's violence and crazy people and drugs and all that. Some people just don't want to go into the shelters. They'd rather be on the street. Some don't even know there's a shelter. They're so far into their mental illness that they're not really cognizant of what's going on. Does the tidal basin here ever freeze over? incredibly rarely I mean I think I mean there's there'll be ice on it but like totally freeze over not really because it also it's a tidal basin so it goes up and down every day so even if it froze then the water would lift it up and crack the ice and da 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 I don't think the Potomac has frozen in probably 20 years or something like that though in the Air Florida disaster there was ice on the Potomac if I remember that was in 1970. No, you can't skate on it. This, honestly, this would be like the last place I would want to skate on, to be honest, because of the, the rising and lowering of the tides, pushing the ice up and down. Now, there is a canal, the CNO Canal, that runs in Georgetown, and that freezes over every now and then, and kids like to go skating on that canal. Park Service comes and yells at them. Kids just skate away. <laughs> I think I've ice skated there once. It was a lot of fun, actually to just endlessly ice skate, you know, for like miles on end. I do actually think, if I remember, I think a cop actually did yell at me with his like bullhorn, you're not allowed to ice skate there. I just waved, kept skating. This road here goes to Virginia. That's why there's a lot of cars zooming out. Actually, not just Virginia, but the freeway, this is like a major artery right here. Hmm. 0.3 miles. Yeah, it's not that far. Where are we heading next? We're going to walk up this street. And then we're going to head down the National Mall. Oh, all right, we got the lights. Cool. 40 seconds to cross.
Mm. It's a shame all these buildings are closed because there's really cool stuff inside. I'm going to cut over to this side of the street today. This way I can be on more security cameras. <laughs> more security? Why? Because this building here is the Bureau of Printing and Engraving. The Bureau of Printing and Engraving is where they print the money and the stamps. <laughs> so if you take a tour of this building, you're pretty much guaranteed to see about a hundred million dollars in cash in small denomination bills. Yeah, giant pallets of uncut $20 bills, $10 bills, stacked three and four feet high and then stacked on top of each other. So when you take a tour of this place, you literally see millions and millions of dollars go by your very eyes. It's really quite cool. It's one of the more popular free tours in Washington. They do have a gift shop and you can actually go into the gift shop and buy like a sheet of $1 bills that hasn't been cut into circulation. So you get this flat sheet of money. Yeah, it's kind of funky. Um, I will continue making periscopes on Twitter, Twitch, and HAPS, H-A-P-P-S, which is a new live streaming app, and of course, a YouTube channel. So you really shouldn't have any problem finding me. Uh, I think no matter what I do, you'll find a notification on Twitter. But uh, most of my live streams will probably stay on Twitter or YouTube. Now, late at night, if you come out here, you can see this semi-tractor trailer truck go by with two unmarked police cars escorting him. And in that truck is all the old money. All the old money they decided that they're going to burn because it's too worn out or it's ripped or it's got markings on it. And they dispose of all that money and they put it into these big trucks and drive it out. Also, they distribute the new money and you can see that as well. So you come late at night. <laughs> that's the trucks of money. So this is the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Yeah. This building is, uh, I can't remember who funded it. I think this was privately funded. And it's a museum of the Holocaust. And it's kind of interesting. There's some, good there's some good displays here. But uh, interesting thing is I brought my kids here and they got to meet a woman who survived the Holocaust. And she told my children what it was like to be a child in a concentration camp. So, kind of made it a little bit more relevant for them to understand. Uh, my favorite museum in DC has got to be Air and Space. I, I, I like planes and rockets and stuff. I could go to the Air and Space Museum every week if I... Hell, I could work there. <laughs> I'd love to work there, but they've got all these ex-military and ex-NASA guys who work there. <laughs> I'm actually thinking that might be one of the first museums to reopen. Not the main Air and Space Museum, but the Air and Space Hangars out at Dulles Airport, which is their new museum, which has all the big stuff. All the big planes, like the Enola Gay and the Concorde and SR-71 and the Space Shuttle. Let this guy go. Yeah, um, I probably will watch the Mars Lander because I'm probably going to be stuck in the house. The weather is not good for tomorrow. It's supposed to be snowing all day. But I, I thought about it. I might go out for a hike, too. If it's a really pretty snow, if it's like, you know, postcard-like snow, I'll probably come out for a hike. If it's like misery and slush kind of snow, I'll probably stay indoors. Ah. <laughs> uh. I got the food trucks out today. 
They must have, maybe these guys are like, yeah, they think there might be a tourist or two who wants a kebab. They have like all these food trucks. They'll have like 30 food trucks in the middle of the summer. But half of them are selling like Middle Eastern food. And I just, I asked myself, I said, you know, is there that much of a demand for all this food? I, I don't really see a lot of Middle Eastern tourists here. But I guess maybe people like that. It's like hummus. We need more hummus. <laughs> I mean, I don't think McDonald's sells hummus. Yes, I have eaten hummus. <laughs> What do we got today? Ice cream. Okay, it's 36 degrees. This guy's selling ice cream. This guy, this guy's an optimist. Yeah. <laughs> Number two truck. Hmm, hamburgers and salad. It is a bit chilly, but actually it's sunny. And with the sun, it's actually warming up a little bit. It's about, it's going to be about 40 degrees, I think. I'll let this guy go because he wants to make the light. I let him go, he missed the light anyway. Sorry. You can see the salt is already deployed on the street there. Okay, what do we got here? French waffle cone. Okay, that guy, like I said, that guy's such of an optimist, he's not even in his truck. Churros, plantains. Mediterranean salad, fatouche salad, yeah. What's this guy? So carne asada and hot dogs and New York euros. And what's this last guy got? Chicken tacos, steak, Philly cheesesteaks, hamburgers and tacos. This guy is just a United Nations of food trucks. Oh, we're not going to make this. Let's go down here. You see these chains here? These are to prevent pedestrians from crossing in the middle of the road, much like I'm about to do. <laughs> chains, not very effective. I think you guys can see our final destination about 14 blocks away. But I think we're only gonna make it to about third or fourth street. Yep, we're on the National Mall, and I kind of wanted to go down this side. I'm going to go over here. I had a plan, and it's all falling apart, so I was going to go down one side, come back the other. In the summer months, people play softball and frisbee and other stuff out here on the mall. It's pretty, pretty mellow. I'd like to get some popcorn. If I had some popcorn, we could get some seagulls. of snow. Uh, we're probably going to get that tomorrow. We actually dodged that first super storm that came through most of the country. I mean, it's just like Southern Virginia got clobbered, but uh, Maryland, D.C., we kind of skated away. See, so looking at the American History Museum, that's a pretty cool museum. Closed, of course, due to COVID.
In there they've got like the flag from Fort McHenry, Archie Bunker's chair. They've got a whole train down in the basement, a big locomotive, race cars from NASCAR. Lots of cool stuff. But closed. pretty empty. I could do my game where I count people. I was going to count people between here and the Capitol. So you're asking what's better than the Washington Monument, and I actually recommend the bell tower over there on the Trump Hotel. That used to be the old post office pavilion. Now it's the Trump Hotel, but you can get up in that tower usually with zero weight. You get a great view of the Capitol and a view of some other buildings. But you don't have to wait in the lines like the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument, you can be there for like an hour. How do they get a train in the basement? There's actually photographs of that. They put it on like a super semi-tractor trailer. They took out, they took out the wall at the bottom corner, and then they rolled the train in. And uh, it was actually quite, quite an effort. They also, they got, you know, they got the Gossamer Condor which is the first aircraft to fly around the world without refueling. And they squeeze that sucker into the Air and Space Museum. And it has this like ridiculous wingspan. I mean, like 180 feet or something nuts. And I'm not sure how they got that in here. So down there is downtown. That's the Trump Hotel. I don't know who watch buildings. These are government buildings. IRS is around here somewhere. I really don't want to know where IRS is located because don't like them. My taxes are too complicated. When you live overseas or when you have overseas bank accounts, it suddenly makes your taxes just to be a nightmare. My taxes are usually 70 to 80 pages of forms because of all our overseas bank accounts from when we worked overseas. Just a nightmare. And it's just a paperwork shuffle. They don't ever, ever do anything. Yeah, it's, it's tax season. Isn't it? I wonder if we're going to get an extension this year. I mean, last year due to COVID, they kicked everything back a couple of months. I hope they do that again this year. <sighs> this is the Natural History Museum. This is bugs and dinosaurs and lions and tigers and bears and diamonds. The gem room here is amazing. Signal. But again, closed, COVID. Sometimes these buildings will double for the U.S. Capitol in movies. So you see a movie and the, the star is going up to testify on Capitol Hill. And he's actually walking up the steps of one of these museums. <laughs> and you're like, wait a tick. You know, I'm wearing gloves, but honestly, I don't think I need my gloves. Mm. It's on the edge that if I wear my gloves, my hands get hot. And if I don't wear them, my hands get cold. So I tell you, what, we're going to wear one glove and have one hand open and free. So inside the Natural History Museum is the history of nature. I mean, they have like fossils, bones, skeletons, um, trees, minerals. They have a butterfly room. It had lots of butterflies. That Teddy Roosevelt donations, those are the ones that go to the Natural History in New York. They're easily confused. This is the Smithsonian's. So I don't know if Teddy Roosevelt donated any animals here. I know the one in New York is filled with Teddy Roosevelt stuff. 
And that's the one where they filmed Night in the Museum, the original one. But then they actually did a Night in Museum 3, I think, which was the one that was filmed in Smithsonian's. My kids like that movie. You, dum-dum, you give me gum-gum. I think they said that for about a year and a half. In fact, they said it to me the other day. You, dum-dum, give me gum-gum. <laughs> and when we went to New York, we went to the Natural History Museum, and we went all the way back to those giant heads where they said, you, dum-dum. Nah, all these museums here in Washington are closed. Though I've been told some of the museums in New York are actually open. Maybe I should go to New York. I will be in New York this summer for about a day, probably. I got a connecting flight to Hong Kong from New York. And it's a bit tricky because I've got to get COVID tested within 72 hours of my flight. So I'm going to get a COVID test here. Then we're going to go up to New York. Uh, we're by the sculpture garden. Yeah, I think I can go in here, actually. Well, there's the sculpture garden over at the Hirshhorn Sculpture Museum, but then there's this, the National Gallery of Art Sculpture Garden. With the giant aluminum foil tree. <laughs> and the funky house. Oh man, I'm gonna get tested so many times this summer. So I gotta get tested before I go to Hong Kong. I get tested when I land in Hong Kong. I get tested 12 days after arrival. I get tested 19 days after arrival. Then I gotta get tested again before I return to the United States. So yeah, it's gonna be COVID test crazy. But Hong Kong uses the spit test now. So none of the nasal swabs, which will be nice because my kids hate the nasal swab. My kids are tested every two weeks. This fountain used to be an ice skating rink. I used to come out here when I was a young congressional aide and ice skate. I had a lot of fun. I got hit on by women a lot here. I don't know why. Just a single guy out ice skating by himself and people would come up and talk to me. I was like, oh, cool. Tell my son that when he gets of age. So that building you see in the background, that is the archives. That is where the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution are kept in nuclear bomb-proof safes. Yes, they have a safe in there with a red phone next to it. And the red phone is a direct line to the Pentagon. And should the nuclear bombs be flying, someone is supposed to call and say, put the Constitution in the ground. They push a button and the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence are submitted down into a thick nuclear bomb-proof safe. Supposedly. <laughs> I don't know if they ever test it. I don't know if there's anyone at the other end of the red phone. <laughs> There's a story about Jimmy Carter once. You know, there is a... There's not actually a telephone between the United States and Russia. There is a teletype machine. And so that is the hotline to Russia, is a teletype machine. And once the, the Carter administration was sending messages to the Russians, and they just got no reply. They just, nobody was writing back. And they got very suspicious. They were just like, I wonder if these messages are actually going through. So they decided, you know what, the next message, let's send it on the hotline. So the next message to the Russians went over the teletype machine. And they got a response right away. And then about a week later, there was a quiet emissary from the foreign minister to the foreign minister state department and said, let's not do that again. <laughs> when the teletype machine goes off, all hell breaks loose. So let's keep that for something great. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I expect when the archives opens again, maybe we'll go talk to the guards about the hotline and see if anyone actually uses the hotline. Yeah, they're pretty chill. It's an 
interesting thing. I had this conversation with someone the other day about the Capitol Police. And we were talking about, you know, being overrun and everything like that. And the thing I tried to explain to them about the Capitol Police is that the vast majority of their day is guarding a door, <laughs> okay, or guarding an elevator. They deal with staff, they deal with um, congressmen, and they deal with tourists. They don't deal necessarily with criminals. They're not like, you know, they're not like your county sheriff who's filled with like ex, ex-veterans who are still kind of, you know, sketched like, like always on a trigger finger, you know, situational awareness, ready for anything. You know, no, most of these guys are pretty laid back cops, you know, they're just, they're, I mean, their big day is like some woman refuses to put her purse on the x-ray machine. <laughs> So when the attacks came on January 6th, I think a lot of them were kind of a bit shaken into a, a new level of policing they don't normally do. White House police, so let's see what we're The military guys, we're gonna see some of those in a minute. Sorry, I'm going back through all your questions. The White House is guarded by the US Secret Service um, Uniformed Division. And if you jump the fence, they can make an arrest. Now, the Secret Service will investigate, like, threats against the president. And then they'll bring in the FBI as well. I'm not sure who would actually make the arrest, the Secret Service or the FBI. Oh, so we just totally blew past this. This is the National Gallery. This is the classical art. And over there is the National Gallery modern art. And that's designed by I.M. Pei. He's the guy who did the Louvre, the Bank of China in Hong Kong, and a number of other modern designs. I was just thinking about this earlier today. The Bank of China was destroyed in the movie Battleship, and I think in the movie Pacific Rim. And then the Louvre was destroyed in that uh, Tom Cruise movie, Better Luck Tomorrow. What was that movie? I can't remember the name of that movie. Tomorrow? Because it had a different name in England. You know, the one where he kept living the same day over again. Uh, what was the name of that movie? But anyway, the Louvre was destroyed in that. And then I was saying to myself, not Mission Impossible, but the, the one where he was like a soldier against the aliens. Anyway, the Louvre was destroyed in that movie. The Bank of China was destroyed in its movie. But this IMP building has yet to been destroyed. <laughs> so kind of like, hmm, Hollywood, catch up. Great, now I got this stuck in my head. What was the name of the movie, guys? I guess Hollywood really doesn't like IMP designed buildings. That or they're just so iconic, they make such fun to destroy. RFK and JFK are buried at uh, Arlington Cemetery. I want to say Better Luck Tomorrow, but that's not, that's this like indie film I saw. National Guard you'll see in about a block. But I need to note that the, the cops and the National Guard guys up here are really, really sensitive now. And if I go out of my way to film them, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get questioned probably. So I will try to show them to you. JFK is buried with his wife. It is 36, but it, it doesn't feel like it's 36 right now. Because the sun is out, it feels like it's in the 40s. It really feels much warmer than it is. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so we're coming up to the fence. And if you look on the other side of the fence, you'll see National Guard soldiers. It's not windy at all today. It's sunny, it's really quite nice. Uh, you know, and they're not gonna arrest you for it, but they have been questioning some YouTubers and Periscopers for filming the fence line. Hmm. And the Speaker of the House has an office in the House Wing, which is on the right, 
but her personal office is probably over in the Rayburn building. So the Speaker will have two offices, one to deal with, you know, the needs of Californians and one as Speaker of the House. So the House is on the right and the Senate's on the left. Uh, is the chimney at the vice president's house is still under repair. I actually drove by today and it's under tarp still. Ah, for a minute I thought they took the razor wire down, but it doesn't look that way. So if you guys look through the fence, you should see National Guard guys. It's a lot warmer now than it was earlier today. Ah. You can't tour the Capitol right now. It's all closed off. There's like protest stuff here. Yeah, they've closed off. This fence runs like 3.3 miles. Don't want to ruin her picture. All right. <laughs> Oh, we had a wicked wind blowing yesterday. If you watch my video of Marine One, it's up on YouTube. It was so windy, I thought they were going to scrub the mission because it was just like, just whipping wind yesterday. Oh, so because there's no flag on the House or Senate chambers, it means that they're not in session right now. There is a flag in the middle, along with the POW flag. Oh, they're taking down the uh, stand. The inaugural stand is being taken down. I hope the guard doesn't stay. I hope this fence doesn't stay. I hate this fence. It, it's a real inconvenience to cross the city. So, where should we go next? Hirshhorn Museum. Air and Space Museum. Refreshments, those are all closed. So we can go Air and Space, Hirshhorn, Arts and Industry, and all the other museums. Yeah, that was the thing. And that's the National Gallery, East and West Building. Yeah, part of the stand is still up. Let's go, we're gonna go around this way. I got a big rock here. We're going to go over to the Eisenhower. Have I had lunch? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. I bought the kids Nando's, and then I stole all the fries. This is the Native Americans Museum. Um, I don't know where Madame Tussauds is in D.C., to be honest. I am going back to Hong Kong this summer for just a, a month or two. So this is actually a new, this is the Native American Veterans ex uh, Memorial over here. They just opened this recently and then of course the museum closed. The Holocaust Museum is back down. 
where we started by the Jefferson Memorial. speakers. Go for broke. That was the 442. The 442nd was the uh, Asian American, Japanese American division from Hawaii and California that served with honors in Italy. I believe it is. I think it's on a loop. Let's go down this way. There's a new memorial down here I haven't visited yet. So we'll go down there and check it out. I've only been in this museum once, a very long time ago when it first opened. Uh, the African American History Museum is the newest of the Smithsonian's. This one's about 20 years old, I think. But I just read they're going to build two more Smithsonian's. I think one is toward, one is for Asian Americans and one is for Hispanic Americans. So they're building two more specific museums somewhere. I don't know that that there was there was a vote, it was towards the end of the Congress. They were talking about doing that. But there was some strong opposition called, they said they would stop balkanizing the American people and having separate museums for everyone. So I don't know if it got through the House and the Senate. I think it was stuck in on the uh, omnibus spending bill. So I'm not really sure if they got the funding for that. There was some opposition, but I don't know if it was very strong or organized. That's Air and Space Museum right over there. I don't know, maybe there's like a master key that opens every museum. Uh, the Air and Space Museum is not really being an addition as so much a massive renovation. The building is falling apart. Um, so they're redoing, they're redoing it one half at a time. They started on the uh, western side, the western half, and then they'll do the eastern side. But I think because of COVID, they accelerated their reconstruction plans. All sorts of renovations and reconstructions are being accelerated in Washington right now. Because there's no tourists. There's no visitors. There's no tourists. There's no people working. It's like, all right, guys, if in the next five years you are planning to renovate, let's do it now. <laughs> so. All right, here we go. Ugh, tour bus. 
a tour bus, but I think it's actually National Guard troops. The only people I've seen in buses like that are National Guard lately. So this is our newest memorial. This is the memorial to Dwight Eisenhower. The Eisenhower Memorial. This just opened, this just opened like when COVID hit. I mean, literally, like in March. These big sticks are part of the Dwight Eisenhower Memorial, president and soldier. And I have no idea how this memorial is laid out or what it's supposed to look like. I know there's this big fence-like thing. There's almost no tourists here right now. DC is pretty empty. Second inaugural address. Here he is doing his D-Day address to the troops. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. D-Day address to the troops, June 6, 1944. Um, some are taking advantage of it, but a lot of locals are just very blasé about museums and memorials and are like, just, I'll get to it, whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, a few, a few locals have done it. Hey, we actually have some more snow. You guys are always complaining. Where's the snow? Where's the snow? There's a little pile of it left. So you can see the west side of the Air and Space Museum is under massive renovation. The east side looks like it always does. But, uh, I'll get that soon. Supreme Commander of Allied Expeditionary Forces in 1944-1945, General Dwight Eisenhower. This was him as a kid. side. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going down this way. I thought Dwight Eisenhower moved to Gettysburg after he that was president, if I remember right. This is the Federal Aviation Administration and the Department of Transportation. Though I think they used to be across the street. <laughs> kind of recycling, maybe. Uh, we got snow coming tomorrow. That's kind of why I went for a hike today. I figured today would be last good weather hike day. Uh, where should we go? Let's go down this side. We're going to stay, stay off the mall and we're going to stay on this road and then we're going to cut through some back roads. Yeah. I try to take you on different paths every time so we can see something new. And since we've seen them all, we'll go on the road and then we're going to cut down past the Spy Museum. 
and make our way down to the waterfront. And from there, back to my car, the Jefferson Memorial. Hmm. Not going to make this light. Maybe I should get a scooter. A scooter would be a lot of fun. And we didn't make the light. That's the Hirshhorn Sculpture Garden, and then next to that is the Arts and Industry Building, the old Smithsonian. I don't know what they have in arts and industry right now. Independence Avenue, walk sign is on. To cross Independence Avenue, walk sign is on. To cross Independence Avenue. I want to cross 7th Street. I don't want to cross Independence Avenue. So I'm stuck here. I could jaywalk, but then we'd miss the funky sign talking to us, wouldn't we? There we go. That's hard to hear. Yeah, I knew this was FAA. Wonder Woman 84 had a scene filmed underneath that museum. The one that's in the trailer where they're talking about a trash can being art. Wait a minute. So this, apparently this area here was once a slave pen, sort of a slave camp. This was one of the most lucrative slave pens operating in the Washington DC before the Civil War. And this, this location close to the waterfront made it a good place for them to hold slaves. Huh. DC, April 16th. See, in April 16th, April 16th, 1862, President Lincoln enacted the DC Emancipation Act, which abolished slavery in the district. That day is still a holiday in DC. And as a result, your taxes are usually not due until a day later because of that holiday. <laughs> so most of your taxes are supposed to be due like April 15th, but because the DC government is technically like on a holiday that day, your taxes get a day extra. That used to have like, I, I, last time I was in there, it was an exhibit of American life in 1876. And, oh God, I don't know how many decades ago. Then it was closed for like a decade. This museum was like closed. And then they opened it with something else. And truth be told, I don't know what's inside this museum. I, it's been so long since I've been able to go inside. I'm not sure what's inside this building now. It's a beautiful old building though. The Arts and Industry Building. And then we'll have the Smithsonian Castle come up on our right. And on our left is the Department of Energy. You may not know this, but all U.S. nuclear weapons are technically somewhat under control of the Department of Energy. 
the Department of Energy has like the funding authority for the production of nuclear weapons, not the Defense Department. And that was done as sort of a backhanded way to funnel more money into the Defense Department was to put the nukes under the Department of the Energy. <laughs> now, of course, operationally, they are under the military, they're under military control and all that. But from financial standpoint, a lot of the nuclear weapons program is funded by DOE and not DOD. I'm not sure if they ever got around to changing that. <laughs> There's the Smithsonian Castle. That's sort of the administrative head quarters of the Smithsonian. And then we have the African and Asian art galleries, both right here. These two little buildings. And what is this? This is 12th Street? No, not really. Lafont Plaza. Let's walk up this street. Just to be different, yeah? Oh, there's the castle. Ah! Ah, shit! Yay! I just cracked my phone case. Hmm. And I think Well, that's great. Crack the phone case. Hopefully Hopefully that's just the glass on the outside and not the iPhone glass. But I fear it might be a little bit more. Uh, oh well. definitely cracked the screen protector but I think it actually went a little bit deeper than that and cracked the iPhone glass which means I need a genius bar appointment pretty soon Pretty good though, I've had a lot of iPhones and uh, this is the first time I think I've ever broken the glass. I've broken the screen protectors before, but uh, the actual glass, I think this is the first. slipped out of my hands. Such is life. Ah, so we're walking up the L'Enfant Plaza, which actually houses the U.S. Post Office headquarters and the International Spy Museum. Though, I think the Spy Museum is only open on the weekends. Five hours? Oh, God. That must have been painful. These are the railroad tracks. If you take an Amtrak from Washington to Miami, you come down these trackings. But these are actually freight tracks too. And commuter rail. There we go. I wonder how long it takes to replace the screen. I wonder if I put it in in the morning if they could fix it by afternoon.
So this is the Spy Museum. And it's a private museum. It's not uh, owned by the Smithsonian or anything. But they have a great bookstore. Just a great bookstore. If you like intelligent stuff, this is where you go to buy some really good books. I wonder if it's even open. It doesn't look that way. The lights are on, though. No entry. Hmm. The Spy Museum store is open. Please use the main entrance. What do you guys think? Should we go inside? Should we go inside? I think we should go inside. Ooh, look at that. Dun, 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 dun. We're going in. Please use the main entrance. We should go window shopping in the spy museum. Okay. Let's see if the store is open. I don't know if it's open. No. I think it's closed. All closed. Museum hours. Yep. Bummer. It said it was open, but I guess that must just be the weekend. Ah, no joy. Sorry, guys. Would have been fun. Yeah, that's no fun. I think they tried to stay open with no tourists. It's just too hard. So this is the post office, and that is the post office police. <laughs> Oh, there's a Black Hawk helicopter. Yeah, the U.S. Post Office has its own police force. You see postal police at the big post office here. All right, let's go down. I think I can get to where I want to go from this side of the sidewalk. We're going into southwest Washington, D.C., and this is an area known as the Wharf. This is all recently redeveloped. It's still being redeveloped. It's very trendy. Lots of restaurants, condos, kind of a cool part of town. Uh, the postal police are probably just providing building security for the post office headquarters. That's not just a post office. That's like the postmaster general's house. That's like the post office. I assume the post office has a lot of threats. <laughs> Hello, France. Welcome to Washington, D.C. You're walking over a freeway just about, oh, a half a mile from the U.S. Capitol. It's all the traffic coming in from Virginia. What a mess. And we're going to go down to the waterfront. Maybe I should buy my wife some crabs. I don't have any cash. I think I do. The fish boats look pretty quiet. So we're heading down towards the waterfront. This is what's known as the fish boats. There's some old uh, 
floating seafood market down here where you can get fresh fish. Oh, traffic is a mess going to the east, to Maryland. I'm not sure what's up with that. Freeway's a mess. This road's a mess. Everybody's bailing out doing U-turns. They're like, I'll go home a month, hour later. I don't think anyone's buying fish today. Some people are buying fish. Grab and go only. It smells like fish. I don't know what one is. Let's see what crabs. A dozen or two or half a bushel. A dozen, let's see, I get you a dozen male or females of the medium. Catfish, shrimp, snapper, tilapia, monkfish, mussels. Squids. I should buy my wife some mussels. I don't have any cash. I think I have cash. Mm. Those are big mussels. Two for 11. I just made one. Yeah, one bag of mussels. That'll be it today, I think. Wife likes mussels. Six dollars. This is the, this is called the fish markets in Washington, D.C., the fish boats. All right, hey, thank you much. Yep. No, he only charged me five bucks. Guess he didn't want to make change. They actually have cooked crab down here, too. Cook, cooked shrimp. Steamed mediums. These are cooked. I'm good, thank you. Squid tentacles. My kids like squid. Mussels, same price. You should get like a...
Probably our lobster. We actually, we got a lobster at home, actually. I, I found, was it a shark? No, no, it's not a shark. <laughs> Looks like a shark. It's a catfish or something. This guy's got raw oysters, seasoned shrimp, crab legs, hot steamed crabs. All right, we got our mussels. We're happy. She should be happy. See, I can surprise my wife sometimes. Should make her less annoyed that I cracked my iPhone. <laughs> I cracked my iPhone. What? A bunch of mussels. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> <sighs> mm. Oh, this is the fish cleaners. This is where they clean the fish. Got them. Knife goes in, guts come out. That's what Yashamaru Fish Works is all about. Whatever that Simpson song was. Yeah, I'm just going to tell her. I'm not gonna... Actually, the phone might be... The phone might not be that bad. It might just be like some dirt. I can't really tell right now because i got to peel off the uh, screen protector. Once that's done, then I'll know the extent of damage to the underlying glass. However, I am going to have to do something about this setup because I've got the muscles in this hand. Ugh, there we go. So now I've got to put the muscles in the other hand and hold the cameras in this hand. That over there is an office building, but behind it is the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Mega posh hotel. Lots of celebrities stay there. It turns out that the Mandarin Oriental was made by the combination of the Mandarin Hotel and the Oriental Hotel in Hong Kong. The two hotel owners merged creating the Mandarin Oriental Group. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was listening to a History of Hong Kong podcast, and they were talking about that. I looked at staying at the Mandarin Oriental for my quarantine in Hong Kong, but two weeks was like $50,000 US. I was like, eh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know, I think it was 50000 but it was a ton of money. It was just a ton of money. Ah, there's a bunch of boats here. Boats are popular in the summer with lobbyists. They'll take some congressional staffers out on a boat, have a little food, talk a little business, yada yada. The booze cruise, as it's called booze cruise is a term of art in the Washington lobbying game. <laughs> There's the Mandarin Oriental. Though the main entrance is on the other side. So we're going to go back under this intersection and we'll be right back at the Jefferson Memorial completing our loop. And then we'll head back home, deal with the aftermath of the broken phone, but surprise her with muscles. Good day. Yeah. Well, there's a couple Mandarin Orientals now. There's Mandarin Oriental Landmark, and then the original Mandarin Oriental. 
in Hong Kong. And uh, is there one in Kowloon? I don't think there is one in Kowloon, is there? Uh, we've got a lobster at home. In fact, I was just cleaning out the fridge like yesterday and I found like this lobster tail. And I'm like, are you ever gonna eat this? And she's like, oh, I forgot we had that. And I'm like, well, given what I had to pay for it, I hope you would eat it before I end up feeding it to the dog that we don't have. <laughs> Ugh. Oof. Gonna get hit. <sighs> Thomas Jefferson Memorial. Like there's another Jefferson Memorial? <laughs> Oh, that's not the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, that's the Fred Jefferson. <sighs> I'll tell you what, since some of you weren't here at the beginning, we'll go back into the Jefferson Memorial one more time. I know some of you guys want to see. Tidal Basin right now, walking towards the Jefferson War. I'll be there in a couple minutes. Uh, I don't know if they're going to let us see the cherry blossoms this year. Last year the cherry blossoms bloomed, but they wouldn't let us see them. It was like not safe due to COVID. They don't, because when the cherry blossom, I mean, oh, imagine like a half a million people walking around here. I'm not joking, like 300,000 people walking around this tiny little sidewalk. There's just no such thing as social distancing. It's very beautiful, don't get me wrong, it's amazing, but in the time of COVID, don't think it's the safest place to be. That's what I was thinking, was that, what was his name, Fred Jefferson? On the Jeffersons? I don't know my Jeffersons well enough. Lots of mud. It was George Jefferson? I knew it was a simple name. George, Fred. There's a train going by over there. I told you it was a freight train. CSX. It was kind of interesting. I was trying to explain to my kids that like when I was a kid in the summer, there was only like one hour of TV programming for kids. And it was like, after that, it was all like soap operas and news and stuff. And they just like, why don't you turn on YouTube? I'm like it didn't exist. Why don't you go to HBO? It didn't exist. It's like, what do you mean it didn't exist? I said, we had three channels, ABC, NBC, and CBS. What are those? <laughs> like those are networks. Do people still watch those? And I'm like, your grandpa does. Like, oh, so it's Boomer TV. I'm like, yeah, it was Boomer TV. <laughs> wow, we pretty much perfectly timed this. My battery's about to die, and we're almost right back where we wanted to be. I'm trying to avoid showing these kids. 
Howdy Doody. I watched Howdy Doody. That's with like Captain Kangaroo was Buffalo was the clown or whatever. Or is that Buffalo Bob show? Buffalo Bob. I did tell him about the glory days of Saturday morning cartoons in the late 70s, early 80s, which suddenly disappeared. I made them watch Johnny Quest once. That scared the hell out of them. <laughs> Johnny Quest, Invisible Monster, the scariest children's cartoon ever made in history. That was a great one. That and the Robot Spy. Those were two of the best Johnny Quest episodes ever. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Clarabelle the Clown, but that was Captain, that was Captain Kangaroo, right? Clarabelle, Clarabelle. All right, guys, we're going to finish where we started, back at the memorial. It is a beautiful day, isn't it? Ah, Chinese school, all that sucks. Richie Rich. All right, guys, welcome back to the Jefferson Memorial, and here Here's where we call it a day. I gotta get home, not only to fix my iPhone, but to cook these mussels. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe, like, and comment. We'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.